Hey guys, just sitting here training my lower biceps. That's right. I said I'm training my lower biceps with my modified version of a preacher curl. Now there's been some serious debate over whether or not you can place more focus on the lower portion of the biceps because some experts have said, well, Jim, you can't really focus on the lower biceps. Jim, you should know you've got a PhD from one of the most respected schools around. You're a research scientist at Yale School of Medicine. You should know. Well, I don't know, and neither do they, actually, because my question for them then is, why do I feel it more in the lower portion of the biceps when I do preacher curls? Why? Why? And that gets them going, hmm, well, I don't know, They've, there's no physics rules. Well, I'll tell you the real science here. Let's get into the real science on whether or not you can train lower biceps. Now, as I said, when you do exercises like preacher curl, you actually feel more pain, more fatigue, more burning sensation in the lower portion of the biceps. So why is that, guys? Well, it's because when you're doing a preacher curl, the shortening is occurring only at the elbow. Now remember, the biceps crosses both the shoulder and the elbow joint, so not only does it make the elbow bend, but it also makes the arm come up at the shoulder joint. To do that, it would have to be contracting at both ends. So, when you do a preacher curl, your arm is supported on the bench. This end is not moving. There's no contraction, shortening contraction going on. Yeah, there's a contraction here to stabilize that joint so that the contraction, the movement can occur down here in the lower portion. So the sarcomeres of those muscle fibers down here are the ones that are doing the moving contraction. So that's why you're feeling it more. Now, when we look at the anatomy of the muscle fiber, we can see that each muscle fiber or cell is made of numerous myofibrils. And these myofibrils contain the sarcomere. This is where the contraction takes place. You can see the two Z lines. That's, those come together in a contraction, a shortening contraction. And during the preacher curl, this is only occurring at the lower end of the biceps and not at the upper end. In other words, you are training the lower portion of the biceps during the preacher curl. Whether or not that can lead to bigger growth in the lower portion is what we're debating. Let's talk about muscle architecture. There's another debate about muscle architecture and what it looks like. Well, the biceps is one of those long muscle fibers. It's supposed to run the entire length. Entire length. Somewhere, no, oh, three to six inches or so is the uh, range in some of the bicep muscle fibers that have been found. These are single hair-like fibers that run the entire length, okay? So, in the physics world, they're basically tubes cables, if you will, cables that are pulling. Thousands and thousands of cables pulling to bring this up, almost like a drawbridge, if you will. Okay, pulling. Well, in a physics world, a cable is only as strong as its weakest link. So, a section of a cable that's smaller in diameter, thinner than the other section, that's gonna be your weak link. So, it doesn't make sense for muscle fibers to grow bigger down at one end than they do at the other. However, Please explain muscles like the pecs, where clearly you can see a difference in muscle mass between the inner portion, the outer portion. And so if there's all one muscle fiber running across the entire length of the chest from its origin here on the sternum and ribs across to the upper arm bone, then there'd be no sense for this an inner area to be difficult for some guys to build up and be much smaller than the outer pec area. Well, unless, unless you can actually place more focus on the ends of muscle fibers. Now, back to that debate over whether it's one long muscle fiber running the entire length. Yeah, there's plenty of those muscle fibers, but now new evidence is suggesting that there's actually a bit of weaving of muscle fibers. Weaving of muscle fibers towards the ends here where instead of running the entire length, it's literally going and connecting to other muscle fibers. Okay, if that's the case, then yes, you definitely can, can work that biceps. And there's some evidence, like I said, there is evidence here, guys. The other thing 
when we're talking about lower biceps, what are we talking about with the lower biceps? We're talking about length, not size really. It's length, okay? We're talking about that gap, that gap between the forearm and where the bicep peak starts, okay? Some guys have a huge gap here and they wanna shorten that gap. So what are they doing? They wanna lengthen the muscle. Not necessarily grow bigger, just get it longer. Well, guess what? Research shows that when you stretch a muscle under a load, such as by holding onto a dumbbell and stretching that muscle with that load placed on it, research shows it actually causes muscles to grow longer. They grow longer, they add sarcomeres. So by stretching under load, which is basically what a negative rep is, it's able to elongate the muscle. Now, we're not talking about inches here, we're talking about micrometers, if that, but over time, you can work to lengthen that muscle belly, if you will. It's not going to make a huge change. It's not going to go from having this massive uh, gap here with this tiny little bicep uh, peak that suddenly fills up your entire arm, but it's going to make a difference, guys. It's going to make a difference. There is actual evidence to support this. Now, for those experts who have been wailing on, who's really the idiot here, guys? I mean, come on. Did you really think about this one clearly? Think about my background. I not only studied exercise physiology, endocrinology, thermal physiology, regulation of genes and muscle during exercise, but I also studied at the Auburn Strength Lab. I studied strength biomechanics in world-class strongmen. So for all of you experts out there who sort of jumped on the bandwagon and said, oh, Jim Stepani doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. He's talking about lower biceps training. Well, guys, you should have probably stopped and asked me what I was talking about before you went out of your way to blast me only to make yourselves look like fools. So lower biceps, guys. Is it a myth or is it a reality? I've given you some evidence to suggest that there might be a reality there. And you know what? There's also been a reality of decades of bodybuilders using the preacher curl for that very reason. You'll feel it more in the lower portion of your biceps. If you feel it, guess what? It's actually working the lower portion of the biceps more. Now, if that's going to lead to big improvements in your lower bicep size, there's only one way to find out. Try it. Try it. Guys, I, this is free advice I'm giving you. Give it a try. I'm giving you some hope here. There is some evidence to suggest we've seen over the decades that people do get some results when they use preacher curls properly. Yet sometimes you can't find the answer in the lab. So all these scientists who are relying on the lab, well, guess what? You're not looking at the right evidence. Let's look in the gym as well as the lab guys. Give it a try. Let me know how it's working for you. It's free advice, guys. I'm just giving out free advice. Let those other losers debate whether it works or not, all they want. All you have to do is go to the gym and try it and you'll find out for yourself. And as always guys, stay gym army strong and gym army smart.